I want to show you how I make duck breaths. I know it's not a real popular thing in America, and that's kind of a shame. I remember after Hurricane Harvey, when we were living in Southeast Texas, we went to the grocery store and duck was the only meat left in the whole grocery store. And I thought it was kind of funny. It's, to me, it's about the best meat. Here living in France, duck is in every grocery store and it's a pretty common thing to eat. And I get it. Usually at the Marche, but sometimes at the grocery store. And there is a big difference between what I get from the local people and what I get in the grocery store. One thing I like about duck is it has a lot of meat kind of flavors. And it reminds me a lot of beef, which I don't get a lot of here. So when I'm craving a steak, I'll cook a duck. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you'll take advantage of of duck. It's a wonderful meat. Fat from it has a lot of really great uses too. I'll show you some of the uses for the fat from the duck in future videos. Thanks. Hi everyone. This is Camper Cooking with Chef Paul. We are Americans living in France who have always liked camping and eating well. Like many of you, we bought a camping car after the first pandemic lockdown so we could still travel safely. Chef Paul does most of the food prep at home so we can have more time to explore. He will show you how a classically trained chef prepares great food, even with a camper's minimal kitchen, utilizing historical and modern... Okay, it's time to prep a duck. These are from the Marche last weekend. So I'm just going to pull off these loose bits of connective tissue. We eat a lot of duck now because we can't get beef. And to me, duck has a lot of the same qualities as beef. So all I'm doing here is cutting hatch marks into the fatty side of the duck. And what that does is it allows the duck to crisp up a little better. And it also allows the duck fat to render off to where I can use it again to make something else yummy like duck confit or potatoes fried in duck grease. Duck grease has some amazing antioxidant qualities, which is why traditionally duck grease was used to for pâtés and terrines and duck confit for that matter to before refrigeration to keep things from oxidizing and rotting. The problem with duck grease while you're camping is it's hard to save and it's hard to render off because generally you have better things to do than to sit around and watching fat boil. So it ends up getting thrown away more often than not. Okay, we have the gas lit and now I'm going to turn it down to the lowest setting I can in the camper. I'm going to start with the fat side down and I'm just going to forget about it for about 10 or 15 minutes before I turn it over and then it'll be another 10 or 15 minutes. I'm only going to cook the duck to be medium rare, but the best way to do that is at a very low heat. And I'll turn it off at the last minute when I flip, flip it for the final time, just the crisp up fatty part. And now I'm going to turn it over and you see, hopefully you can see, you're starting to get some nice definition where I made those hatch marks. Now this is about nine times as much pepper as anybody else in France would use. So it'll be almost enough by the time I put this much on the other side. And a fair amount of salt. And what you missed in the few minutes while I let this cook off camera was a little bee flew in and stung me on the arm. And I don't have a first aid kit in the camper because, well, I guess I'm just not a very good Boy Scout. It hurts. So I'm going to have to self-medicate. When I'm camping, I cheat with the vegetables a lot. It's the only time I ever use frozen vegetables, but I don't like frozen carrots. So I bought these already peeled and washed fresh baby carrots. I really like the way carrots taste with duck especially when they're fried in duck grease. So I'm gonna put them in here and let them start working with the duck. And this will be pretty good because some of them will be cooked thoroughly the way I like them, but there'll still be a few that are just barely warm and crunchy, which is the way my wife likes I've got these duck breasts. 
these are from the Supermarché. It's not usually the brand that I like the most, mostly because I tend to leave a lot more connective tissue on it. And sometimes I'll find a feather or two. But these were so inexpensive, such a great price that I couldn't resist buying them. And also, in between Black Friday and Christmas, ducks were kind of hard to find. And usually it's something you find everywhere all the time. But all you could find then was turkey. Of course, you couldn't find turkey until Black Friday. And normally I really like my ducks just salt and pepper. I'm usually happy with that. But I stumbled on a trick for making these. really kind of savory and it's so simple i always score the fat now i'm gonna put it in my marinating dish here fat side down scoring the breast like this the fat the skin helps the fat render off and it helps make it crispier i'm gonna add some fish sauce vietnamese fish sauce and a bunch of sriracha. And normally sriracha isn't an ingredient to actually be cooked. It's a condiment that goes on after. But I found that this works pretty well. And I'm just gonna spread it around. And it's not gonna come out hot, it's gonna come out really savory. And that is all there is to that. I'm gonna refrigerate this at seven in the morning. So by seven tonight, it'll be ready. I cook these ducks pretty much the same way as I cook duck breast every time. Skin side down, medium, medium low heat, and a lot of patience. I'm going to say a whole lot of patience because I'm going to have to squeeze that duck in after these are almost done. It's been a good five minutes and you can see that it's just starting to sizzle just a little bit. It was enough time for me to peel two carrots and a parsnip and a whole bunch of ginger and then slice them on mandolin. Ginger I did half on the mandolin and finished by hand. It's a lot of ginger, but it's going to work really nicely with the flavors of the duck. So now that it's starting to sizzle, I'm not ready to turn it over yet, but I am ready to just pick it up and uh, redistribute the grease underneath. And that's really all I want to do right now. It's probably going to be another 10 minutes before I flip it over. Maybe even more, 15, 20. It takes me about half an hour cooking duck really slowly to get a perfect medium rare duck. It's been another 10 minutes. You can see I'm just starting to crisp up a little bit here. And I'm hoping I can squeeze that other Magret du Canard in here. Magret du Canard? Thank you. Because once I turn it and the sriracha hits that oil, it's going to ruin the oil. I don't have to have any hope of crisping it up. So I just can squeeze it in. That's good. And we'll let it keep going. Okay, we can see that we're already starting to cloud the Well, that looks about perfect. <clears throat> I'm trying to get my ginger in the bottom as much as I can. I'm not trying to be crazy about it. going to cover it at this point. I don't usually do this but I want these carrots to kind of steam and I'm crowded my pot already with all these duck breasts. I 
Oh, that aroma is amazing. Now, one disadvantage to this recipe is because I've ruined my oil, I can't turn the, the ducks back over to crisp up the, the skin. Honestly, we normally remove the skin be before we eat it anyway, because we don't need that, that extra fat. Even though duck fat's not as bad for you as many greases it's still not the healthy thing for somebody as portly as i am to be eating these are almost done i'm gonna cook some duck breast there's a trick to getting crispy duck breast and the trick is to score the fat side the skin side just kind of a eighth of an inch deep with little cross hatches and what this does is it increases the surface area of the fat, so it'll render off better, which having some dark duck fat around is always a good thing. And it allows some of the grease renders off. It allows you to take the rest of it and crisp it up. I think duck is one of the easiest things to cook well, but nobody seems to know how to do it. I remember after Hurricane Harvey, back when we lived south of Houston, all the grocery stores were wiped out of food. And we had plenty because, you know, I like to cook and sous vide and can things. And, but I still had cabin fever and wanted out of the house. So I left, left the house and went to the neighborhood grocery store. And there was no meat at all except for some frozen duck breasts. And I thought that was funny because really that's one of the best foods there is, is duck. But Americans just don't really understand how to cook it, so they're scared of it and they don't eat it. I don't always feel like duck even needs any seasoning. But I find when I do give it some seasoning, it tastes even more like beef. So I'm going to let those hang out and um, bench rest before I slice them. But I need this grease, this is really valuable. So I'm just gonna strain it into a coffee can. You can buy duck grease, but if you eat duck often enough, you can also harvest your own. So you see, I'll render this later. Once I have two or three cans of this, I'll put it in a saucepan and cook it under very low heat for quite a while, basically boil off all the water. And I'll strain it in between every time I move it. You end up with really pure grease. You can buy duck grease, you have to have it to make duck confit, and I eat a lot of duck confit. You end up losing a little bit every time, but you can reuse your duck fat over and over and over again. We usually take the skin off before we eat it. It's not the healthiest thing in the world. So I went ahead and chopped it into little pieces and I realized that my dog needs a few more minutes. Cutting it into little pieces and throwing it back in the pan allows it to render a little easier and melt a little better. And I'll get just a little more grease out of it. Man, that is a heap of sliced, beautiful meat. Now, let me show you how I'm gonna make my like the crackers. Just taking that skin, slicing it into fairly thin chunks. Not as pretty as I would do it at home, but 
we're roughing it. We're eating um, farm grown duck in a camping car, so we can't expect restaurant quality. <laughs>